Okay, week one is done, Tank. All right, no more week one. We're on to week two. And these are some storylines that have been crushed because of week one. And I got a little list for you. I want to see what you think. You better agree with me or I'm going to fly across the country and kick your butt. All right, we'll here we goes. go. Number one, myth busted, narrative busted. Okay, we're not going to talk about this week. Lamar Jackson can't throw. You like that one? I love that one, actually. And, you know, and, and the reason I love it is because of this. Now, he is like the he's like the real life Willie Beeman. Like Willie Beeman, they're trying to like switch him to, to like cornerback. And obviously Lamar comes out, he throws for like five touchdowns. People are trying to move him to wide receiver, say that he's not gonna be a legit quarterback. And instead of talking all that noise in the offseason, he just comes out and he balls, and then after the game, he's just like, hey. Pretty good for a running back, huh? So, hey, I like the swag. I like the little bit of shade to throw at everybody that was hating on him before. So, Lamar, hey, I can't argue with that. Yeah, no, I know. It's hard to argue with that, right? I mean, when you're getting disrespected after you've won a Heisman in college football as the best quarterback and old GMs are kind of saying, I think he should play receiver in the NFL, yeah. I love that yeah, he kind of – Yeah, get to the uh, new school. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and way to go, Lamar. Keep proving them wrong. Okay, number two on my list as far as narratives that are no more going into week two, mm -hmm. all right? The Cowboys, they can only win with their run game, their old school 90s approach. They need Zeke Elliott. Their offense isn't good enough without Ezekiel Elliott. What do you think about that one? I like that one, but one narrative that I like a little bit more is Cleveland Browns because I was in Cleveland. I went into the dog pound this weekend, threw on my Titans jersey. They were all hyped up like they were just about to blow the Titans out of water, but then, oh, those bubble guts came through. And then Baker turned the ball over three times. Defense couldn't stop anyone. Derrick Henry did the same stuff he was doing at the end of last year, and then they pounded the Browns into submission. So now I want to see if Baker's going to be the quarterback that I thought he was, the hero that Cleveland needs and can put the team on his back and lead him to a big victory on Monday night. Now, if he could do that, then they'll get back in everyone's good graces. But I think I like that narrative a little bit better than the boys. Okay, okay, good. All right, oh, this is why. I was going to put them on the list, all okay. right? But, but I still got belief in that Cleveland offense. And I won't forget this. First of all, you're a homer going there rooting for the Titans, all right? Just got to point that out. Yeah. I feel like Cleveland this week, the Jets, no good pass rushers, questionable corner play, that this week is the week they might show their stuff with Baker, OBJ, and Jarvis Landry. But we'll see. That's why I didn't put it on the list because okay. I think okay. this could be, a re it could be the coming out party this week. We'll see if I'm right. Now, number three on my list, okay? Mm -hmm. Bruce Arians, a.k.a. the quarterback whisperer, he's going to fix Jameis Winston and yeah. clean his his game up yeah negative ghost rider I don't believe that one sorry I actually I mean I gotta agree with you on that one because Jameis Winston I mean this is probably the most important year of his career I mean the only headlines that we've heard about were stuff that happened in college and so it's about that time now where he's in the contract year where you have to step up and you have to be a man and show people that you're a franchise quarterback because he's running out of chances. And we all thought with Bruce Arians, you have all those weapons. Defense scored a touchdown. If the defense scores a touchdown, turn the ball over for you. You playing at home, you have to win that game, especially against the Niners who really didn't show a lot in the preseason. So, yeah, Jameis got to step it up. But now he has to go against Cam on Thursday night football and both of them need a win? I don't know, bruh. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, I'm not sold. It looked like the same old Jameis to me, and I'm scared for that. I root for the Bucks because I'm a homer, too. They drafted mm -hmm. me. I played there one time, too. I had a few others on my list, but I thought those were the three best. I also, just to throw it out there, ones that were, like, alternatives. Matt Nagy is an elite offensive play caller. No, sorry, got to see more there, okay? Todd Gurley's not going to be the same. Uh, negative Ghost Rider, he kind of looked freaking good. And, oh, the big bad Jags are back. I hope you didn't like yeah. any of those uh, more than the three I picked. See, because now, I think when my you threw out the Matt Nagy, I probably would have taken it up a level and gone to Ryan Pace because I think he's going to get a lot of heat for selecting Trubisky over Mr. Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes, but we'll talk about that another time. That, that, that's a good point. Let's not blame Trubisky. Let's blame Ryan Pace, though. I'm there with you on that one.